How do you see someone as not just a person who's suffering, but a living being who has hopes and dreams and passions and a story, and how do you actually let that inform your medical care? How do you take a deep breath? I went into geriatrics with a deep passion for taking care of older adults. It's one of the most important pieces of being a geriatrician is understanding what motivates people, what moves people, what's a what's a sense of quality of life for a patient, and really understanding those goals uh, helps you take better care of the patients. I think it's vital that communication skills be taught to medical students early on in their careers, because I think as you go through training, if communication is not a solid foundational skill that you have, it becomes harder and harder to gain that skill over time. We are building a new program. It's called the Program in Compassionate Communication, a program to teach communication skills in every aspect, all across the lifespan and in every setting of care, to have a very different experience for patients and families when they interact with healthcare to actually feel heard, respected, empowered, part of the team, partners in their care, profound change. Okay, Sophia, we're Thank gonna you. go ahead and listen to your heart. To be in a room like this with your child, not knowing what the future is gonna be, is like not what a parent wants to have. Sophia, our daughter, has a pretty wild story medically. We've had a lot of medical interventions, a lot of time in hospitals. It's meant a lot to us when providers have seen her as a person. Being a nursing student. What goes through my mind constantly when I enter patients' rooms and when I'm observing my instructors is that compassionate communication is a skill. Just as much as being a nurse and working with machines and working with blood pressure cuffs, every moment you have with your patient is crucial. So everything that comes out of my mouth, every gesture I make, every way in which I'm touching and interacting with the patient needs to be done with compassion. The general public expects nursing to be compassionate because we're with patients so much of the time. Without compassion, they don't feel cared for. There's absolutely room for improvement. We have to train ourselves to sometimes look beyond what's visible or maybe the story that we've heard to look deeper for, for the, the humanity that deserves respect. Hey, Betty. Hi, Joe. Nice to oh, see you. Me up as always. <laughs> Physicians realize that it takes more than being smart and technically good at things to be a good doctor. It really does. Fundamental to that is being able to communicate and to be compassionate and empathetic. In a 20-minute office visit, trying to take a step back and just listen is really, really tough. But I have found that doing that and just giving the space for a patient to open up and say what's on their mind almost saves time in the long run. Sometimes just being silent and present allows a patient to sort of get everything out that they wanted to and I get a wealth of information. Patients who actually adhere to the treatment recommendations, they actually reveal things that they don't with other providers and so it's just better for care. If you want to start by putting the blood pressure cuff I do not know what kind of physician I want to be. One, one thing that I do know is whatever the setting is and whatever the type of medicine, I want to be able to have intense close relationships with patients. I think most students start medical school with a lot of enthusiasm and passion for people and empathy and they're excited to learn and something happens over the first two years that love of people, it's not that it's diminished but it's just the enthusiasm is drained a little bit. And I think medical education is moving more in the direction of ethics courses and opportunities to interact with patients while you're learning the basics of medicine, but I think there needs to be more. I feel uh, as though it would be important um, for the next generation of physicians who are going to be taking care of more and more frail elderly um, to understand communication skills go beyond just that one-in-one -one patient interaction but actually should broaden out and really have a community of communication. A lot of institutions focus on teaching physicians and it's not so much patient-centered. If 
more education is given towards patients, I think that benefits everyone. It helps a doctor explain treatments if their patient knows what direction they're going in. So I think having this patient-centered um, focus will benefit all education. Healthcare is changing so much, and it's really exciting. I'm, I'm happy in many of the ways it's changing, but it's also incredibly stressful. Burnout's a huge issue in modern medicine today, and I think we need to find things like mindfulness, compassionate communication courses. I think it's actually vital that we start doing this more. Now we have pieces, small pieces. We could be so much more effective if we truly had an integrated program in compassionate communication, and that means hiring an endowed chair and making it someone's job to truly be the hub that facilitates, coordinates, supports it all. Compassionate communication is like the cornerstone of what it means to be in the healthcare profession not just something we do because it's our job to do it. It's because as healthcare professionals, it's who we want to be.